Welcome back. Now, we consider the real-time PCR quantification methods in part 3 of our videos on real-time PCR. Before we start, let's first look at the disadvantages of real-time PCR, which include 1. It is expensive. Both the equipment and the reagents are costly. 2. Intra- and inter-assay variations exceed. Why? Because 3. PCR is highly sensitive and you may get high deviations from the sample from the same treatment. However, there are obviously many advantages as mentioned in my previous slides, and having a clear understanding of the options for performing real-time experiments or quantification methods will help. In fact, once you have validated assays, with the primers used and the annealing temperatures or conditions are test, the advantages of using quantitative PCL will allow you to, to, to produce reliable and quantifiable data. Actually, real-time PCL is very sensitive and absolute quantification is possible. However, this method assumes all samples have the same amplification efficiency and it is also more labor-intensive. You also need to make a standard curve for all genes to be tested. However, the standards you can use are usually DNA-based. So, if you need to start with RNA, you need to clone all of the genes into a riboplasmid vector to generate RNAs to be used as the standard. Even after you have cloned, you've done all this, you still need to measure the amount of RNA for your standard curves. Actually, absolute quantification is less possible, if not impossible. When you need to do RNA profiling or compare gene expression levels, perhaps relative quantification or relative fold changes should be used. Relative means relative to the level of an internal control RNA. In other words, you only need to perform relative quantification and standard curves are not needed. The method used are the relative standard method or the comparative CT or delta CT method. As an example, you need to detect CMIC gene expression. So you first test the CMIC primers and construct a standard curve with different amounts of total RNA that are made from zero dilution and used for real-time PCR detection. By using a housekeeping gene such as GAPDH, you can compare the levels of CMIC with GAPDH. The level of CMIC for six brain samples averaged and compared to GAPDH in the upper panel is 0 0.07, whereas the value for kidney in the lower panel is 0 0.4. If the amount of CMIC normalized with GAPDH is set as 1, the full induction or the level of CMIC in the kidney is 5.5 .5 times or 5.5 .5 fold, higher than that in the brain. Next, we can use the relative efficiency to de of the target and reference genes to develop the comparative CT method or the delta-delta CT method. In this table taken from the Applied Biosystem Manual, different amounts of total RNA are were used, and the CT values for CMIC and GAPDH were also determined. The delta-CT method uses the CT values of CMIC minus the CT values of GAPDH. For the different total amount of RNA used in the assay, the delta CT values should be the same or highly similar, say, from 2.8 to 3. We can actually plot a graph showing the delta CT values on the X or the Y axis and the different amounts of total RNA used on the X axis. A straight line should be formed if the delta CD values do not change much even if with different amounts of total RNA inputs. And the slope of this curve should be 
smaller than 0.1. Once this is proven, or as we say, the relationship is validated, we can use the delta delta CD method as described in the next slide. In the delta delta CT method shown here, we can compare the CMAKE levels in different tissues. Of course, although the CMAKE CT values are different in different tissues, the gap DH levels should be more stable. Otherwise, gap DH would not be used as a reference gene. The delta CD values for each tissue can be determined and relative to the brain for which the relative expression level is set as 1. The delta delta CD method can determine the levels of CMIC in different tissues relative to gap DH. The liver has the highest level relative to the brain, which, as mentioned, is 1. In another example here from my own publication years ago, we use actin as the reference gene to study the expression of a gene called metallogenin, VTG1. We needed to determine the PCR efficiency of both of the genes, and we validated the use of actin as a reference gene in the delta delta CD method with the relative efficiency plot using different amounts of RNA inputs. This isn't always the case, however, if the reference gene is not stably expressed in your samples and shows different PCR efficacy, it cannot be used as a reference gene. Only genes with the same PCR efficiency can be used, and in the comparative CT method, efficacy comparison or validation of the reference gene is crucial to successfully obtaining reliable data. The choice of the reference gene is very important in the calculations of the delta delta CD method. Here, the difference between the two delta CD values, delta delta CD, represents the correct shift of the target gene. In this example, since the target gene is the treated sample, has moved to the left of the standard, it has a negative value, but in maps, Subtraction of a negative value is equivalent to adding that value. So if you look at the diagram, the total shift is equal to the two green arrows added together. During the delta delta CD calculation, since there is a power of two delta delta CD value, the calculated number could be huge. And the CD values we usually use include two decimal points after zero. Even a little bit of change in the data points can make a huge difference. In Chinese, the term is called cha ji hou lei mao yi qin lei, which means a miss is as good as a mile. Hence, your pipetting technique must be good. <laughs>